My name is Mike Nurichlo, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. We just had Alan Meadows, the Berg Hound, on the show. Don't miss that episode, the one below. That's kind of what's formatting these next few episodes. Another quick shout out before I get started, Spartacus Wines. I just want to say, you rock, man. Thanks so much for the positive feedback and the comments you've been leaving below. It's people like you who just make me want to keep doing the show. So all you people out there who I know are watching, because I get the feedback or I get the analytics on the show, I love getting comments. It just makes the show much more worthwhile and exciting for me to do. And I can't wait to get to know more of you out there. All right, into the show. We're going back into shotgun format sort of in this show, but Alan Meadows, Berghound, just had him on the show. I figured, I hope you guys learned a whole bunch about Burgundy. I figured I'd see if I can find some value Burgundies for you to learn a bit about Burgundy. So today we're gonna do a white Burgundy. So you learned in the show previously, most of the white wine done in Burgundy is Chardonnay. Now I'll say most because in a coming up episode you'll see a other grape they use in Burgundy for white wine. It's not very well known. Um, White wine we're doing today is a Bourgogne Blanc by Leroy Le and Fies. There you go. Now, remember, when you see Bourgogne on the bottle, it more or less means fruit sourced from all around Burgundy. It's, it's kind of the, one, of the, one of the lower tiers of the scale of Burgundy wines. The cool thing about Bourgogne is you can find epic value. Um, I mean, you can find Grand Cru's, Premier Cru's, whatever in Burgundy, single chateau wines that are world renowned. And these wines, you can pay like six, seven, eight hundred dollars a bottle just because of their reputation. Now, you pick up a bottle like this, seventeen dollars. We'll taste it, see how it goes, but if you find value Borgonia, those seven, eight hundred dollar bottles, are they really two, three hundred percent better than this bottle of wine? It's kind of in the eye of the beholder, but it's a funny topic. It's hard to say. Anyway, we're going to taste this one, see what we think. So again, 2009, Borgonia Blanc, Mont Vial by Laurent and Fuse. Let's see what's going on. Okay, right away on the nose. This is something I love about white burgundy. It screams minerality. Burgundy is known for their minerality. And yeah, this just has this like wet, gravelly, kind of limestone-y flavor to it. Just, I mean, if you were to take some gravel and some limestone and just wet it and smell it, you'd smell the same thing I was smelling here. Again, with this really neat, you can smell the acidity on the nose. It's got these really neat citrus notes, almost like, yeah, kind of lime peel, a little bit of lemon, something like that, but bright. Um, and again, white burgundy, Chardonnay. Typically, when you taste Chardonnay, people often think, ooh, California Chardonnay, big, heavy, goopy white wines. They tend to be like very buttery and creamy and very oaky. Chardonnay from Burgundy is much different, much the opposite. They're making a much more elegant wine, much more, what do you want to call it, prestigious wine maybe. Yeah, as opposed to those overbaked. That's the other cool thing about Burgundy. It's not a super hot wine region. It's much cooler, much more simplistic, much more like, let's say, Vancouver Island, something like that around here. It's not a baking hot wine region. And here's an interesting fact. For those Canadians, BCites, Burgundy, Bordeaux, France, all that, we're kind of on the same parallel. Hmm, it says something about the future of our wine world, our wine industry here in BC. Anyway, back to the wine. Hmm, okay, on the palate, again, that minerality really comes through. Minerality in wine gives it this really neat backbone, just gives it that extra layer of substance and something that's more interesting to it. Um, nice and fresh under screw cap, keeping it fresh and fruit forward. It's got this really neat kind of lime, apple, pear sort of thing going on. And their oak program is giving it this hint of kind of like, like doughy cobbler, something like that, slight breadiness, but nothing over the top. It's just balanced and integrated so well. And the acidity on the back end gives you this, this savoriness. It's got almost, again, a word I say often, brininess. But when I say briny, it just kind of, it reminds me of, um, Something savory that just makes your mouth water and crave more. Mm. It's a nice wine. I like this wine. This, here we go. Value Borgonia, 17 bucks. This would pair super well with just a really nice salad, 
epic with cheeses. This goes so good with like a goat cheese or a blue cheese. Um, I mean, what do they say on here? Yeah, perfectly matched with fish and seafood. They also say goat cheese. I might have stolen that earlier when I looked at the bottle. Anyway, <laughs> good wine. I'm excited about it. Excited to enjoy the rest of this bottle later on this evening. Let's go ahead. I'm going to say 87 and a half, 88 points. I like this wine. Enjoyable. Awesome. So thank you so much for watching today. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of the new face of the Wine Garage TV. And we'll see you on the next episode.